ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर नष्ट प्रायशो भद्रेश भागवत सेवया भगवती ऋतुम श्लोके ओम ज्ञानतिरांद से ज्ञानाजन शलाकय चक्षुन्मील मेन तस्म श्रीगुरव नम नम ओं विष्णुपादा कृष्ण प्रेष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी की नाम नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देशतारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैतगदाधर शिवासादि गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे स्पर्शो भवत्ततो फ्रॉम इथीरियल एक्झिस्टन्स विच इवॉल्स फ्रॉम साऊंड सो फ्रॉम साऊंड इथर कम्स फ्रॉम इथर नेक्स्ट ट्रान्सफॉर्मेशन टेक्स प्लेस अंडर द इम्पल्स ऑफ थाईम अँड द सटल एलिमेंट टच सो फ्रॉम साऊंड टू इथर इथर टू टच अँड देन एअर and the sense of touch become prominent course of time when the subtle forms are transformed into gross forms they become the objects of touch so the whole creation is from subtle to gross uh, it from sound then ether till earth uh, everything goes from subtle to gross and the dissolution is just the reverse um the objects of touch and the tactile sense also develop after this evolution in time sound is the first sense object to exhibit material existence and from the perception of sound touch perception evolves and from touch the perception of sight which is the next one that is the way gradual way of, way of gradual ev- evolution of our perceptive objects mm. so here uh, sound touch and then sight and so on and from ether next is air and and other elements will follow nrutvam khatinatvam cha shaityam ushnatvam eva cha etat sparshasya sparshatvam tanmatratvam navasvatah softness and hardness and cold and heat are the distinguish distinguishing characteristics attribute of touch which is characterized as the subtle form of air tangibility is the proof of form in actuality objects are perceived in two different ways they are either soft or hard cold or hot etc this tangible action of the tactile sense sense is a result of the evolution of air which is produced from sky चालन व्यूहन प्राप्तिर्नेतृत्व द्रव्यशब्दोंक्षण आक्षण ऑफ एयर इज एक्सिबिटेड इन मूमेंट्स मिक्सिंग अलोइंग अप्रोच द ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ साउंड एंड अदर सेंस परसेप्शन एंड प्रोवाइडिंग फॉर द प्रॉपर फंक्शनिंग ऑफ ऑल अदर सेंसेस सो दिस वायु इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट you can perceive the action of the air when the branches of a tree move or when dry leaves on the ground collect together and similarly it is only by the action of the air that a body moves and when the air circulation is impeded many diseases result paralysis nervous breakdowns madness and many other diseases are actually due to an insufficient circulation of air in the ayurvedic system these diseases are treated on the basis of air circulation vata if from the beginning one takes care of the process of air circulation such diseases cannot take place 
from the Ayurveda as well as from Bhagavatam, it is clear that so many activities are going on internally and externally because of air alone. And as soon as there's some deficiency in the air circulation, these activities cannot take place. Here it is clearly stated, Netritvam Dravya Shabda Yoho. Our sense of proprietorship over action is also due to the activity of air. The air circulation is stifled. We cannot approach a place after hearing. Someone calls us, we hear the sound because of the air circulation. And we approach that sound or that place from which the sound comes. He is clearly said in this verse that there are all, these are all movements of the air. The ability to detect odors is also due to the action of air. And so, so many things air is doing. And nothing much to add. Vayoshchasparchatan matra drupam daiveritad abhut samuttitam tatastejas chakshu rupopalambhanam by interactions with the air and sensations of touch. One receives different forms according to destiny. By evolution of such forms, there is fire and eyes sees different forms in color. So next one is from after sky, air, fire uh, and then sight. Mm. Because of destiny, the touch sensation, the interactions of air and the situation of the mind which is produced of the ethereal element, one receives the body according to his previous activities. Needless to say, a living entity transmigrates from one form to another. His form changes according to destiny and by the arrangement of a superior authority which controls the interaction of air and the mental situation. So based on what type of form, that type of that sensation, interactions of air, situation of mind, all these things happen. Form is a combination of different types of sense perception. <clears throat> Redestined activities are the plans of the mental situation and the interaction of air. So all the is just showing how the body works. Um, mental situation, interaction of air. Dravya krit krit Pam gunata vyakti samsthat pam evacha tejas pam tejas astadvi rupa matrasya brutayaha. My dear mother, the characteristics of form are understood by dimension, quality, and individuality. The form of fire is appreciated by its effulgence. Every form that we appreciate has its particular dimensions and characteristics. The quality of a particular object is appreciated by its utility. But the form of sound is independent. Forms which are invisible can be understood only by touch. That is the independent appreciation of invisible form. Visible forms are understood by analytical study of their constitution. The constitution of a certain object is appreciated by its internal action. For example, the form of a salt, form of salt is appreciated by the interaction of salty taste. And the form of sugar is appreciated by the interaction of sweet taste. Taste and qualitative constitution are the basic principles in understanding the form of an object. Uh, so form has three things, dimension, quality, individuality. Uh, quality um, is appreciated by its utility. So like for food, it is taste like that. Dyotanam pachanam panam adanam hima mardhanam mardhanam teja sovrutayas vetaha shoshanam kshutrud evacha. Fire is appreciated by its light and by its ability to cook, to digest, to destroy cold, to evaporate, and to give rise to hunger, thirst, eating, and drinking. The first Symptoms of fire are distribution of light and heat and the existence of fire is also perceived in the stomach. Without fire, we cannot digest what we eat. Without digestion, there is no hunger and thirst or power to eat and drink. When there is insufficient hunger and thirst, it is understood there is a shortage of fire within the stomach. And Ayurvedic treatment is performed in connection with the fire element, Agni Mandyam. Since the fire is increased, 
by the secretion of bile the treatment is to increase by is increased okay by the secretion of bile the treatment is to increase bile secretion the ayurvedic treatment thus corroborates the statements in shrimad bhagavatam the characteristic of fire in subduing the influence of cold is known to everyone severe cold can always be counteracted by fire okay these things are known rupa matra adhi kurvana tejaso daiva chodita tasa matram abhut tasmadam bhojifara sagraha by the interaction of fire and visual sensation subtle element taste evolves under a superior arrangement from taste water is produced and the tongue which perceives taste is also manifested tongue is described here as the instrument for acquiring knowledge of taste because taste is a product of water there is always saliva on the tongue okay uh, prabhu uh, yeah perfect question on the previous verse the verse before what is what is bile mean bile the bile before. bile is uh, what is that there is the uh, bile juice uh there's one organ no in the body uh huh bile pancreas produces bile, bile. yes it's it's one of a digestive juice like uh, to, to make it alkaline or acidic you know like it's it comes oh, in yeah. the digestive system yeah yeah bile is the greenish yellow fluid Fluid. that is secreted by the liver okay by the liver cells to perform two primary functions to carry away taste to break down fats during digestion okay bro uh, <coughs> okay kashayo madurastikta katvam la iti naikadha bhautikanam vikarena raso rasa eko vibhidyate Although originally one taste becomes manifold as astringent, sweet, bitter, pungent, sour, and salty. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six, six types of tastes due to contact with other substances. So when I read this, one what comes to my mind is Krishna's meal consists of all these. <laughs> all six tastes are, are present. Kledanam pindanam tripti. ప్రాణానాప్యాయనోందనంతాపాపనోదోభూయస్వంబసోవృత్తయస్వమాహరెక్టరిస్టిక్స్ఆఫ్ర్ర్ర్ర్ర్ర్ర్ర్ర్ర
Mixed smell is sometimes perceived in foodstuffs prepared from various ingredients such as vegetables mixed with different kinds of spices and other fatida. Bad odors are perceived in filthy places. Good smells are perceived from camphor, menthol and similar other products. Pungent smells are perceived from garlic and onions. Acidic smells are perceived from turmeric and similar stored substances. The original aroma is the odor emanating from the earth and when it is mixed with different substances, this order appears in different ways. Bhavanam Brahmana Sthanam Dharanam Sat Visheshanam Sarva Sattva Guno Vedaha Prithvi Prithibi Vritti Lakshanam The characteristic of the function of the earth can be perceived by modeling forms of the Supreme Brahman, by constructing place of residence, by pre preparing pots to contain water, etc. In other words, earth is the place of sustenance for all elements. Different elements such as sound, sky, air, fire and water can be perceived in the earth. Another feature of the earth especially mentioned here is that the earth can manifest different forms of the Supreme Person of Godhead. By this statement of Kapilas, it is confirmed that the Supreme Person of Godhead Brahman has innumerable forms which are described in the scriptures. By manipulation of earth and its products such as stone, wood and jewels, these forms of the Supreme Lord can be present before our eyes. When a form of Lord Krishna or Lord Vishnu is manifested by the presentation of a statue made of earth, it is not imaginary. This is Archa Vigra. The earth gives shape to the Lord's forms as described in the scriptures. In the Brahma Samhita, there is a description of Lord Krishna's lands, the variegatedness of the spiritual abode, and the forms of the Lord playing a flute with his spiritual body. All these forms are described in the scriptures and when they are thus presented, they become worshipable. They are not imaginary as the Mayavada philosophy says. Sometimes the word bhavana is misinterpreted as imagination. But bhavana does not mean imagination. It means giving actual shape to the description of the Vedic literature. Earth is the ultimate transformation of all living entities and their respective modes of material nature. Nabho guna Visheshorto Yasyatachrotram Uchate Vayor Guna Visheshorto Yasyatatsparshanam Viduho A sense whose object of perception is sound is called the auditory sense and that whose object of perception is touch is called the tactile sense. Sound is one of the qualifications of the sky and is a subject matter for hearing. Similarly, touch is the qualification of the air in the subject matter of touch sensation. Tejo guna vishesh ortho yasyatta chakshur uchate ambho guna vishesh ortho yasyatta drasanam vidu omer guna vishesh ortho yasyasya grana uchate Sense whose object of perception is form. Uh, the distinctive characteristic of fire is the sense of sight. Sense whose object of perception is taste. Distinctive characteristic of water is known as the sense of taste. Finally, the sense, of, sense whose object of perception is odor. The distinctive character of earth is called the sense of smell. So the different senses, mm, eyes, ears, nose, etc. Parasya drishyate dharmo yaparasmin samanvayat ato visheshu bhavanam umavevo palakshate. Since the cause exists in its effect as well, the characteristics of the former are observed in the latter. That is why the peculiarities of all the elements exist in the earth alone. Sound is the cause of sky, sky is the cause of air, air is the cause of fire, fire is the cause of water, water is the cause of earth. So this is the whole process. In sky there is only sound, in air there is sound and touch, in fire there are sound, touch and form, in water there are sound, touch, form and taste, and in earth there are sound, touch, form, taste and smell. Therefore, earth is the reservoir of all qualities of the other elements. Earth is the sum total of all other elements. The earth has all five qualities of the elements. Water has four qualities. Fire has three, air has two, and sky has only one quality, sound. When all these elements were unmixed, the Supreme Person who guarded the origin of creation along with time, work and qualities of the modes of material nature, he entered into the universe with the total material energy in seven divisions. 
after stating the generation of the causes, Kapil Dev speaks about the generation of the effects. At that time, when the causes were unmixed, Supreme Person got it in his feature of Garbhota Kashai Vishnu entered within each universe. And the causes were unmixed. Accompanying him were all of the seven primary elements, five material elements, Mahatattva and false ego. This entrance of the Supreme Lord involves his entering even the atoms of the material world. This is confirmed in the Brahma Samhita Andantarastha Paramanu Chayantarastam. He is not only within the universe but within the atoms also. He is within the heart of every living entity. Karbodaka Shai Vishnu, Supreme Lord entered into everything. So it means these elements were created but they were not mixed. Mm, so they were created mm, by material elements, then Mahatattva and false ego. With that the uh, Brahmanda was formed, I think so. Then Lord entered as Garbhodaka Shai Vishnu. Tatastena nu vidhvebhyo. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Yeah. So on the previous verse, so, so non-mixed means, uh, that means living entities are not created yet. Yeah, yeah, not yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is just the so, anda. It's saying yes. Okay. This. Okay. So, Andama Chetanam Uttitam Purusho Yasma Dudat Tishtat Asavirat. From these seven principles roused into activity and united by the presence of the Lord, an unintelligent egg arose from which appeared the celebrated cosmic being. So, this is just the Anda. So, the cosmic, the Brahmanda is now created and the Lord enters as Karpotakashaya Vishnu. In sex life, the combination of matter from the parents, which involves emulsification and secretion, creates the situation whereby a soul is received within matter and the combination of matter gradually develops into a complete body. The same principle exists in the universal creation. The ingredients are present, but only when the Lord enters into the material elements is matter actually agitated. That is the cause of creation. We can see this in our ordinary experience. Although we may have clay, water and fire, the elements take the shape of a brick only when we labor to combine them. Without the living energy, there is no possibility that matter can take shape. So this was just matter, seven principles. Now, Supreme Lord roused into act. They all roused into activity when the Supreme Lord entered by the presence of the Supreme Lord. Similarly, this material world does not develop unless agitated by the Supreme Lord as the Virat Purusha. Esmad Udatishtat Asav Virat. By his agitation, space was created and the universal form of the Lord was manif also manifested therein. So, this is the Virat Purusha. Veta Dandam Vishesha Vishesha Krama Vridhair Dashotarehi Tayo Dibih Paribritam Pradhane Navritair Bahihi Yatra Loka Vitan Oyam Rupam Bhagavato Hare. The universal egg or the universe in the shape of an egg is called the manifestation of material energy. Its layers of water, air, fire, sky, ego, mahatattva increase in thickness one after another ten times. Ah, here it is there. Each layer is ten times bigger than the previous one and the final outside layer is covered by pradhana. Hmm. The water, air, fire, sky, ego, mahatattva, pradhana. Within this egg is the universal form of Lord Hari, of whose body the 14 planetary systems are parts. The universe or the universal sky which we can visualize with its innumerable planets is shaped just like an egg. As an egg is covered by a shell, the universe is also covered by various layers. The first layer is water, the next is fire, then air, sky. Ultimately holding crust is pradhana. Within this egg-like universe is the universal form of the Lord as a Virat Purusha. All the different planetary systems are parts of his body. This is already explained in the beginning, second canto. The planetary systems are considered to form different bodily parts of that universal form. Persons who cannot directly engage in the worship of the transcendental form of the Lord are advised to think of and worship this universal form. The lowest planetary system, Patala, is considered to be the soul of the Supreme Lord. Earth is considered to be the belly. Brahmaloka, the highest planetary system where Brahma lives, is considered to be the head of the Lord. This Virat Purusha is considered an incarnation of the Lord. The original form of the Lord is Krishna, as confirmed in Brahma Samhita Adi Purusha. 
the Virat Purusha is also Purusha, but he is not Adi Purusha. Adi Purusha is Krishna, Ishwara, Paramakrishna, Sachidananda Vigraha, and Adi Radhir Govinda. Bhagavad Gita Krishna is also accepted as Adi Purusha, the original Krishna. The original. Krishna says, no one is greater than me. There are innumerable expansions of the Lord and all of them are Purushas or enjoyers. But neither the Virat Purusha nor the Purusha Avataras, Karanud Kashai, Vishnu, Garbhoda Kashai, Vishnu, Kshira Kashai, Vishnu, nor any of the many other expansions is the original. In each universe, there are Garbhoda Kashai, Vishnu, the Virat Purusha and Kshira Kashai, Vishnu. The active manifestation of the Virat Purusha is described here. Persons who are in the lower grade of understanding regarding the Supreme Lord may think of the universal form of the Lord, but that is advised in the Bhagavatam. The dimensions of the universe are estimated here. The outer covering is made of layers of water, air, fire, sky, ego, mahatattva, and each layer is ten times greater than the one previous. The space within the hollow of the universe cannot be measured by any human scientist or anyone else. And beyond the hollow, there are seven coverings, each one ten times greater than the one preceding it. The layer of water is ten times greater than the diameter of the universe. And the layer of fire is ten times greater than that of the water. See, the layer of water is ten times greater than the diameter of the universe. And this is four billion miles, if I'm not wrong. So just imagine how big this is. So the layer of water is ten times four billion miles. Then layer of fire is 10 times, 10 times, 4 billion miles and so on. These dimensions are all inconceivable to the tiny brain of a human being. It is also stated that this description is of only one egg-like universe. There are innumerable universes besides this one. So we can imagine how big Mahavishnu must be. And some of them are many, many times greater. It is considered, in fact, that this universe is the smallest. Therefore, the predominating superintendent or Brahma has only four heads for management. In other universes which are far greater than this one, Brahma has more heads. In Chaitanya Charitamrita, it is stated that all these Brahmas were called one day by Lord Brahma, Lord Krishna on the inquiry of the small Brahma, who after seeing all the larger Brahmas, was thunderstruck. That is the inconceivable potency of the Lord. No one can measure the length and breadth of God by speculation or by false identification with God. These attempts are symptoms of lunacy. See, actually, when we hear things like this, no, uh, we can. Uh, why Krishna talks about all these these things? This is the opulence of the Lord. And by hearing this, uh, at least the bare minimum thing that we should uh, that uh, should Im increase in us is faith in Krishna, right? Because he is like so unimaginably powerful. That all this we are talking about is just uh, Mahavishnu, who is just like, you know, many times uh, removed expansion of Krishna. Right? So, how powerful Krishna is? If Mahavishnu is only so powerful, how powerful Krishna is? Hmm? Because Mahavishnu only manifests whatever energies Krishna wants him to manifest. Right? Uh, what wants... Krishna wants himself to manifest as Mahavishnu. Only those qualities are manifested. No, Krishna has all qualities. You know? So we can't we can't really imagine Krishna's position. Uh, so that is why first it is the opulence of the Lord, uh, Purushottama Yoga, uh, so that we will get the confidence to surrender to him. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I don't have to doubt him. Uh, I don't have to doubt him. But unfortunately, we still don't develop that faith. Mm. So Krishna is so merciful, you know, he's not rejecting us. Yesterday, like a couple of days back, some devotee was speaking to me, like, you know, they're having some challenges, no faith in Krishna, etc. Then that person only was saying that, actually, I keep seeing all the time, Krishna is doing something or the other in my life, as in, he's helping me out. But still, I don't have faith. Uh, still, we don't have full faith. Because we have been used to false ego. We've been used to taking care, doing things by ourselves, thinking that we are the doers. Uh, in false ego. So, suddenly we forget uh, what is Krishna's position. I see so many, so many devotees actually, you know. Just not full faith. We don't have full faith. 
Prabhupada writes in Bhagavad Gita, one of the purports, the whole process of devotional service is to increase this faith. Mm. So if we don't have faith, then we should read this first canto, second canto, mainly second canto, and then some parts of third canto, or Bhagavad Gita again and again, so that we start, we hear, and you know accept this for uh, opulence of Lord, and then understand, oh, Krishna is so great. What is my problem? When Krishna says, Sarvatarman Pariti Jamame Kam Sharanam Raja, what is my problem? Hmm. So, you know, it's a matter of faith. Uh, we've already discussed this faith topic. You should have pure faith. Pure faith. Yavasayatnika buddhi ekeha kuru nandana. Just by doing bhakti, everything is achieved. Hmm. And simply focus uh, on our time and energy in doing bhakti. Hmm. Yeah, of course. Uh, karma yoga means working for Krishna. So if we are working, then we work for Krishna. Uh, we use the results of our work in Krishna's service. Yeah, but for all this faith is required. We will have the faith to give uh, 50% of earnings to Krishna. Yes. Uh, one who doesn't have full faith in Krishna will not give. Isn't it? Uh, we doubt Krishna's statements. Krishna is saying, Yoga Kshemam Vaham Miham. Mm, but we doubt. Actually, there is no qualification required for this. This is another, another objection devotees put forward, saying that, no, no, I am not so qualified. I am not so advanced. Actually, it's not a question of advanced. It's just a question of faith. It's a very simple, simple thing. It's simply faith. That's all. Nothing else. No other qualification is required. We don't have to be some exalted and devotee, nothing. We just simply have to have faith. And then Krishna reciprocates. Anyway, these are all these are all teachings in Bhagavad Gita. That is why one who reads Bhagavad Gita properly, he comes to the platform of full surrender to Krishna because he knows, yeah, I have full faith in Krishna. He's the most powerful. He's my friend also. So what more do I need? Bhoktaram Yagna Tapasam Sarvaloka Maheshwaram. Sarvaloka Maheshwara is and then we surrender. So don't we should never stop reading Bhagavad Gita because our surrender is never complete. So we have to keep reading, keep reading Bhagavad Gita, then Bhagavatam 1, 2, parts of 3. Keep reading, keep reading, keep reading till we have full confidence, full faith in Krishna. Actually, this faith, you know, this topic is very, very deep. That is why this whole thing says Adho Shraddha. When we are chanting, our mind goes here and there. Why? Because we don't have faith in Krishna. Mm. Why am I saying this? Anybody wants to? Uh, most of devotees are always concerned about chanting, chanting. So, uh, something about chanting. Mm. Why? Why am I saying this? If our mind is going here and there, that means that we don't have faith in Krishna. Any thoughts? Hare Krishna Prabhu. Yeah. I think that is because false ego takes over. No, I'm just uh, simple. Like, we, if you're thinking about material things, etc., which means that we don't have faith in Krishna. What does this mean? We still want to lord it over to the Lord. Sense gratification. Okay. But Prabhuji, I, I mean, just a question which has arisen. Even when you're chanting, you, you have some faith, so you're chanting. And you don't yeah. want these thoughts to come, but they come. Yeah, that's why. And, that's that's and, the question I'm asking. Yeah, they we come, have... Prabhu. Like, and they're so, they're very, very, they're very, very affirmative. I mean, I'm, I'm so many times praying to the Lord, I want to put my head onto your lotus feet, but it doesn't happen. My head goes to many other lotus feet. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. May, may not be lotus, but yeah, some other <laughs> feet. <laughs> <It's a part. laughs> just, uh, like, you know, just... Yeah. So, what is the reason? What is the reason? Attachment to material stuff? Or yeah, yeah. attachment to material. Stuff. Attachment to material, but more important, more important than that. Because we than forgot that. about Krishna like since time immemorial, bro. It's difficult to all of a sudden, you know. Uh, no, it's not all of a sudden. No, like we are chanting. Mm -hmm. We are chanting, right? When we are chanting. Yeah, we are chanting, we are chanting, but we probably might have started, I don't know, 
uh, maybe in pre previous birth or even in this birth. So, because if, if we are attached to this material world, I mean, I was reading one of the verses. So, like, we are Nitya Baddhas, right? We are, like, time immemorial. So, we cannot even calculate how long ago we got into this material cycle of birth and death. So, and now, all of a sudden, we are given this knowledge. Yeah, this is this is this is what your original uh, you know position is. This is this is who the supreme personality of Godhead is. So we're slowly getting acquainted to this real situation. Right? Yeah, yeah. So I think it takes time. Yeah, my question again. I'm repeating my question. If the other things are coming into our mind, it means that we don't have faith in Krishna. Oh. Paul Sigo Prabhuji, we are not we do not love the Lord as we love ourselves. No, no. I mean Sim that very simple. And other? No. actually very simple thing. See, when Paul we are thinking about other things, we are thinking about other things because we think that we are the doers. Do that for yeah, yeah. yeah so which see. means that we have faith in our own in our own actions, in our own ability, but we don't have faith in Krishna. We don't have faith in Krishna's words in Bhagavad Gita. We don't have full faith. Right? So when the day when we can throw away the thought saying that I am not interested in this, Krishna is there, right? Then we are like completely full faith. So see when when we say our chanting is bad, so that is why root cause analysis has to be done. Root cause analysis is lack of faith in Krishna, right? Because if there is no faith, what is the question of love? Love will come only later. No, when we have once we have faith in a person, only then we can love that person. Hmm. And that is why the first thing is to just build full faith. And which is why for that building that full faith, we have to keep reading this. You know, this Purusha Avataras, you know, this all this creation business, Krishna's opulences, and just understand Krishna is so huge, he's so powerful unimaginably powerful. Why am I doubting him? Why am I not trusting him? Hmm. So we have to build faith. We have to build faith. Only then we can go to the next stage. Hmm. Any thoughts? Yeah, I mean, uh, no, I mean, this is amazing to read, Prabhu. But uh, I mean, see, in spite of Krishna being all powerful, just the material creation, one universe itself is so gigantic and so huge. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita that so Mama Tejom sa Sambhavan. So basically, he says yeah. like this is just a spark. I mean, yeah. in spite of like all powerful, you know, just one universe, like innumerable universes. Even that Krishna says is just a, a spark of my uh, yeah. Opulence. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that is even which, 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 which is why you know, I mean, it's so he's so huge, he's so powerful, and then yet, you know, he comes, he gives himself to devotees, and says, okay, bind me up, you know, this is Krishna. Yeah, we just can't. I mean, he's uh, that's why you know every time we just think about this. How amazing, how amazing, you know, wonderful Krishna. There's one chapter in Krishna, but wonderful Krishna. You know, Krishna is wonderful. But we don't think about him. We don't think about him much. Uh, that we are so steeped in our own world uh, where Krishna doesn't exist. Or Krishna exists when I want him to exist. Mm, like that. So we, we keep forgetting him. And the reason we're forgetting him, see, it's a very, actually, just, I request everybody to think deeply into this question of trust, right? Suppose say we trusted Krishna. Suppose say we trust somebody. You trust a person, okay? You trust some person, you know, any kind of problem, you trust that person saying that, you know, if I go to this person, he's going to give me some solution, right? Now, what happens when you have a problem? What is the first thing that comes to our mind then? Some new problem comes up. First thought comes to our mind is, I'll go and talk to this person, isn't it, right? Because we have that faith in that person. We have the faith in that person. But we don't have the same faith in Krishna. Mm. When things are coming up in our mind, etc., you know, problems, 
this, that, and all that. Thought doesn't come to my mind saying that, you know, why am I trying to solve this myself? Why don't I just go to Krishna? Hmm, that is Vrajavasis, right? Vrajavasis, they don't even know. They don't even are, it's, they don't even like, it's there in the back of their mind that Krishna is Supreme Lord, but they don't love Krishna because he's the Supreme Lord. They just love Krishna because he's Krishna. And anything happens, just say, call, call out Krishna. That's all. Who cares? I mean, whether Krishna is power, he is opulent, but we are all fallen, right? So Krishna has to come and tell us saying that, no, 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 please, I am actually powerful. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me. Yeah. Still we say, no, no, Krishna, I am going to test you. Uh, who is testing whom? So crazy we are. Anyway, this was a new revelation to me just now uh, about this trust. So that's why I was just expanding. So I think it's it's important. Uh, just trust Krishna. And then all our all our life challenges will go off. Krishna will simply accept us with both arms. Oh, okay, Prabhuji, just I wanted to ask uh, ask something. Yeah. Now, like you're saying, uh, like you say, okay, trust. It's not that we do not trust Krishna, but somewhere, like, don't we have to put in our endeavor, or like, it's not, it's not that I'm, I'm not wanting to surrender while chanting, but then my mind is just getting, it's just, it's not that I don't trust him. See, like, now I'm just the, uh, when you said this, I'm just, even Dropati, when she was getting disrobed, she was doing her uttermost till ultimately she gave up. Even Gajendra, thousands of years he was fighting till he got that buddhi of. Uh, we we we've, we've got that spark that is Krishna, but Prabhu, yeah. something holds us back. Now, nah? what holds us back? It's not that I I can do it or I can. Somebody even there we give it away. Can I? am not the doer. I am. No, we are trying no, to do that, but it doesn't yeah, come. Yeah, you know, but it's it's you know, nice to think about this, right? See, there's a big difference between doing action versus worrying about something, right? Uh, Draupadi, she was not worrying. She just called out to Krishna. That's all. She tried. It didn't work. She just called out. She's not brooding over it. She's not thinking about it when she's doing mm. something else. I mean, mm. see, the, there is a big difference between yes, just yes, putting yes. our endeavor, right? See, but we yes, are, yes. we want to delve into the, and we think that we are the doers. We think that we are more powerful than Krishna. We think that we have the solution. Uh, you know, I mean, it's just craziness, actually, right? That's Simply, good. see, think about a simple, uh, a small child, yeah. right? Yeah. A child has a problem, Child has a problem, right? What does it do? Is it trying to find solutions? It's going to just go and tell its father, mother, saying that hey, I have a problem. That's all. Simple. Right? Then the parents might tell something, saying that do this, do that, something. The child will just do. Right? So we should we should understand, saying that, you know, we should have this childlike uh, innocence. Right? Of course, Krishna wants us to do. But why do we have to do that, that thinking business when we are actually, when it is a time, to actually build that relationship with Krishna. When it is time to build relationship with Krishna, we are extending or we are deepening our relationship with material things. Right? And the rest of the time, anyway, we are deep drowned in material things. Right? And the only time we get to actually build relationship with Krishna, we are still delving on these material things which are anyway not in our control. Right? And will that situation change if... Uh, if I if I don't think about it now and want to think about it after my chanting, is there anything that is going to be like so earth shattering? No. I mean, maybe sometime, right? But that's not a daily business, right? That's not happening on a daily basis, right? So we have to just understand. See, when material thought comes into our mind, we have to just remember this. See, some of these sutras actually they help a lot, you know. Yeah, and it's it's rude. It's rude awakening, right? When these thoughts come saying that I don't trust Krishna. You know, when, when we when we face this stark reality in front of us, we'll feel like, oh, sh what is this nonsense? Let me let me trust Krishna. Okay, I'm going to throw away this thought. I'm going to come back to it later after my chanting, right? So a little bit being curt towards you, ourselves, you know, sometimes, many times, at least for me, it helps. It just pushes me from that, you know, comfort zone. I'm in, I'm, I'm in that zone where, you know, I'll, I'll just give some reasoning, Something to not just accept, to not just, uh, you know, do what is expected. So when I tell myself saying that nonsense, you don't have trust in Krishna, uh, you know, then I'm like, oh, really? Okay. No, no, I want to have trust in Krishna. Okay, let me now do this. Let me drop this. Let me drop this thought now. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, one more, just uh, while we are 
uh, talking about this chanting, yesterday I was hearing one class. Um, uh, this is Vijay Prabhu, who's, uh, you know, who's a minister for book distribution. Mm. So he was saying that one of the things he learned during his, you know, chanting um, he is actually when mind gets distracted, he says he re he traces back the beads. For example, uh, you know, there for two, three beads uh, or, you know, five Mahamantras, mind is gone somewhere and we recognize it. Then we go back five beads. Uh, suppose the month, mon suppose our mind had gone away one whole mala, we didn't realize. We'll drop that mala. We'll redo that mala. So... <laughs> Prabhu has made one brilliant statement. Today I was trying it. It worked actually. He said, mind is a non-devotee. Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur said that mind is a non-devotee. And because mind is a non-devotee, mind doesn't want you to chant. What is the punishment for the mind <laughs> to concentrate? He is if, I, if we tell the mind, hey, you don't like chanting 16 rounds, right? No, if you don't cooperate with me, I'm going to go back, right? So if one round was bad, I'm going to do it, do that round once again. So instead of 16 rounds, I'll end up doing 17, which means that you have to just be with me for 17 rounds instead of 16. So why don't you just be, you know, uh, discipline yourself so that you can just be with me for 16 rounds and then you are, I'll let you off, let you go. <laughs> right? It was amazing. Actually, you know, it was just a shard, such a deep realization you know, saying that, you know, just so I started retracing my beats. Okay. Uh, five namas, my mind is gone to any material thing. Okay, go back five beats and then again chant. So it took a little bit more time than usual, but uh, it was amazing actually. You know, I could see that the mind was getting a little bit more disciplined. Um, you can try this. Anyway, so the point is that, and when we are doing that retracing business, we can also think, okay, do I not trust Krishna? Why am I, why am I trying to delve on these matters myself? And just build that trust. Like we should think about Rajavasis. Any problem, simply Krishna, that's all. Drop it at Krishna's feet. And did Rajavasis think, am I am I, I am supposed to do some action? Okay, there is a forest fire. I am supposed to do some action. What is it? Am I supposed to run away from here? Uh, am I supposed to? No, I'm, what is my action? Just crying out for Krishna is my action. Krishna, help me. Help us. We are your devotees. That's all is the action. Right? They're not taking any further steps. You know, it's just amazing. That is why the surrender is the is is a topic which is so difficult to understand because you know we we always end up saying that no no shouldn't I do something shouldn't I do something actually yeah we have to just call out to Krishna that's all we need to do we don't need to do anything else Krishna is so merciful he will take care of such devotees who are helplessly calling him out but then we think no no I also should do something and then I end up doing and Krishna says okay. Till you are done with your attempts and come to me, keep trying. Sometime in our life, we should realize this saying that, no, I'm done. I'm done with all this trying business. I'm going to just simply depend on Krishna. Yeah, anyway, far from there. <laughs> I can just speak of these things, but I'm far from there. Yeah, Chiranjeev Prabhu. Can't hear you. You're speaking. Hare Krishna. Hare. Yes, Mother. Hare Krishna. Prabhuji, in, uh, in the last verse which we discussed, uh, mm -hmm. like uh, when you go from subtle to gross earth, earth, water, fire, air, it's in that order, right? Reverse, so, reverse. Yeah. Reverse, no, reverse. Okay, reverse. Okay, yeah. in page number 487, uh, it, it, it is written the first layer is water, the next is uh, fire, then the sky and this thing. And then yeah. uh, immediately somewhere, uh, somewhere there. Then how how is it that? Part no no no. Ends? These two are different things. These two okay. are different things. So one is the creation process wherein from subtle to gross things are produced. Huh. These five seven layers are which are the coverings of the earth. So the uh, air comes that, between air comes between water and fire. Yeah yeah yeah. That it is this. Place. Yeah it, this is not place. yeah this is not okay. as per the creation. This okay. is just to hold the anda is technical, right? To hold the anda, like first there is water, so on, right? That's just how the creation is done. Yeah, this is not good observation, but this is not connected to the way the creation itself happens. Okay. Amazing. I had not noticed that. Thank you. You know, because there were two different sentences in the one, yeah, yeah. one in good, that page and one in that. Yeah, good observation. Okay. Thank you. Sir.
Okay. Hare Krishna. Anything else? Anybody? Yeah. Okay. So we'll close here. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jaya, Jagat Guru Shila Prabhupada ki jaya, Vancha Kalpata Rupyashta Kripa Sindhu Beva Chha Patitana Pahana Krishna Rambiya Namona. Ananta Koti Vaishnava Lekhi Jaya Sao Nita Pura. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Dhanabad. Dhanabad.